One, I simply feed her under my arm. Back lock, swim up round. So she's doing the right thing. It's just I'm that half step ahead of her. All right, I am here with none other than the hound, Jay Cooper, and today we're gonna be exploring some catch wrestling principles that's gonna round out your fight game. Jay. What is catch wrestling? Well, catch wrestling was one of the original submission styles. Um, it's a composite system, came from various ones. Um, there was the Lancashire catch wrestling, there was all the folk style wrestling you got in England. Then you had the American carny wrestling circuit where they used to get the people and fleece them for their money. And it's made its way into the modern game again, partly from the pro wrestling game, but also from the advent of MMA and those guys coming back into things. My own lineage goes back to um, Billy Robinson from the UK via Harry Smith, uh, the British Bulldog. Um, and he obviously had not only Billy, but his grandfather Stu Hart, so we've got a lovely stampede cowboy connection going on there. And he's trained with Josh Barnett, Eric Paulson, Sakuraba, Fujiwara, all the names in the game. And he's always been very, very generous in sharing that knowledge with me. So the least I can do is share that knowledge with you. Epic. So if someone hasn't explored catch wrestling, what are they going to get out of it? Well, it's a fundamentally complete system. So although there's no striking in it, it's not difficult to insert that in there. But it emphasizing posture, position, and control. There are submissions in there as well, but the whole idea behind this is you get hold of your opponent, you put them down, and you keep them down. So it's a really, really fantastic method, not only for self-defense, um, but for security details, for police work, for fitness, there's nothing better, because you get a sweat and a half when you throw men around in women in Lycra. Um, and you know what? It's one of those arts that I came to late in the game, haven't done jiu-jitsu for so many years, but the second I found it, I was hooked and smitten, and I've been spreading the gospel ever since. Epic, well let's give our viewers a taste. Let's do that. All right. Okay guys, so in this next series of videos, I'm gonna give you an introduction to some of the fundamental pieces of catch catch can wrestling. This is if you've never done it before, if you have experience in another discipline or art, or even if you're just curious and wanna try something new. So one of the beautiful things with catch catch can wrestling is the concepts within it are almost universal. If you do jiu-jitsu, judo, or something else, you can take something from this, and you can actually fold it into your own game. If you have no grappling game whatsoever, I can't think of a better introduction to get you guys rolling. So in these lessons, I'm gonna take you from a very very basic standing position. We're gonna go down to a couple of grips and holes from the top. We're gonna to hit the deck, we're gonna finish him, we're gonna get back up, and we're gonna walk away smiling. I think you're gonna get a lot of value from it. First thing I'm gonna go over with you today is the basic grip position or the collar and elbow tie up. It's something that you see a lot in grappling matches or even when you're doing a scuffle on the street, you'll see people just kind of lopch on and grab each other. There are a few idiosyncrasies to the way that I was taught it by Harry and the way that I continue to teach it to my students, which make it a little more fundamentally sound and harder to actually break away from whilst giving you all those options that you can finish your opponent with. So let's get back into it and see what we can do. So for the first thing, I'm gonna require the assistance of my partner, Sarah Jade, AKA the Morrigan, so I'm just gonna bring you on in here. Now you may notice there's a little bit of a size disparity going on here, but there's a reason for this, because once I've shown you me working at it on someone smaller than me, we're gonna reverse that, and she's gonna show exactly the same concepts and principles to show that this isn't something that's limited to just being a big, massive, hunky, and devilishly handsome dude like myself. So what we're gonna do is address the core principles. When you see a corn elbow tie, certainly in the days um, that you see it in the MMA matches or wrestling matches these days, people just sort of go in and they're loose and they're working and they're driving in and they're, and they're kind of just struggling for it. And it's fine and all, especially when people are getting tired because you start to decrease your skill set there. But if we can put these ingredients in place right from the beginning, the gap that we have in the degradation between the skill and the application is lessened. And that means you've got a slightly more applicable process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this. I'm not grabbing high on the head, I'm just cupping the back of the neck nice and loosely. One of the reasons I don't like doing the head is although I can pull that down, if she stiffens, that locks me. So if I just grab and pull and she stiffens that head and neck up from here, it locks in and now we're engaged. If I go down here and she moves her head up, I really don't care because it doesn't affect my position or my posture at all. Second thing I'm gonna do from here, this isn't a grip, this is a cup. So I'm cupping the back of the head. A lot of people will just drop the elbow in or just have this arm floating here. The obvious structural flaw here is if she just pushes that arm off, there's very little that I can do to hold it on. She pushes it the other way, same thing again, it'll fold in on itself. So what I wanna do is get this elbow closer to her body. This also stops her rushing in. So she comes towards me now, so my arm will fold in under itself, and I'm gone. 
If I put this elbow down and now she comes towards me, see already that's harder for her to get in, but she's still folding me. So this is the missing ingredient. I cup, I drop, and then ever so slightly, I move it across. So rather than straight like so, it's angled like this. So as I go straight here, I make that swan neck and my arm naturally turns and goes in. The reason this works so well is when I swan neck, when she comes towards me, Give it to you. There you go. So she's putting all that effort in and I'm putting very little in. The cool thing with this is it works the other way around, so put it on me. So she puts that in and I'm going to drive into her now. And she can control relatively well with just single point. It's not guaranteed, you're not going to stay there forever like Captain Morgan and just pose. But it is going to give you that ability to control their energy coming into you. So I lock up, I lock in, she does the same. Good. This now gives me my second piece, which is this here. Again, I want to almost do that swan neck aspect. Cup here, not grab, not grasp, not tight, cup it. The reason for this is, if I grab, if she grabs my arm, so just pull this one down for a second, she grabs really, really tight, so she's got a good grip on that arm, push down, so she's really locked in. Watch what happens to her posture now. it breaks because there's tension in there. If she cups it, and I suddenly drop to let go, watch what happens to her tracking. Yeah. And as I go to move around, she's still in with me, and is able to work that off. So, cup lightly, drop it, swan neck. Cup lightly, drop it, swan neck. Cup, 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 cup. Leg in, leg out. Sometimes you'll see me stand quite upright, that's an idiosyncrasy of how I wrestle, but as a general rule, nice solid base down there, and if we push into each other it becomes basically neutral, go. And the position kind of cancels each other out. So when we're moving around, and we're in that position here, you find as we're wrestling, all of a sudden, you would jump and we're in. And you find yourself in that collar and elbow tie position. Review the basics from here. Cup, swan in. Cup, swan down. Elbows are down, elbows are in. Sink the posture, and we're good to go. So building on from where we were with that core and elbow tie, let me introduce you to one of the uh, most savage submissions you'll ever learn. This is one of the first techniques I was taught in catch wrestling outside of the fundamental structures and basics, and it's called the grovet. Um, dates from the Wigan days. Everyone in the catch wrestling world has a variation on it. This is the one I teach, and this is the one I was shown, okay? So, we go into our core and elbow tie. Notice we're nicely aligned and she's got beautiful posture. So the first problem I have to do is trying to break this, because if I just pull on this, and you can see I'm actually giving it and trying to work it, it's very hard to move that on its own. I can't muscle that down. This is when the footwork becomes so important in everything that we do. So I can just grab it and pull it and I can muscle that off. I can move myself away from it to get that off. But anytime I do a big move like this, I'm opening myself up and they're gonna come in and counter that if they're savvy. Instead, I'm simply gonna do this. As I'm in my position, one foot comes up one foot goes back. Now notice what I've done here. You see this gap? It's that big. That's all I need. Because watch this one finger, down. Now, you're not going to do that in a match, obviously, but just illustrates the concept and principle. So I'm trying to pull this off, and I can't do it. So again, I abandon the tension. If I put tension in, the second I move, she'll read that tension. There she goes. Now she's eating my space. Good. If I don't tell her when I'm moving, close your eyes. and she's feeding under the arm here. This is where I want her to be, okay? So, from this position, I step up, I step back. As I do, I peel this arm clear. I don't need a big grab. I don't need to yank it down. Step up, step in, move. Now notice she's dropping already and going down. This is where a lot of people make the mistake and they go for the head here and they reach over and notice she's instantly setting up to the back and now I have to fix this with something else. Rather than put myself through that, one, I simply feed her under my arm. So I'm not going over, she's coming under. Notice this little gap I've got here. This knuckle 
on the thumb is going to hit her in a jaw. As it does that, I drag this arm down, tie it off, and get ready for that tap. There she goes. Let's turn that around here. That's a nice crack you got going on there. <laughs> Up, down, and under. Strike that head. Now you see here, this is when I'm bringing it. It's not under my arm. I'm not full on in the chest. Here and turn. So she's almost doing this side battering ram. Now believe it or not, on its own here, I can just compress that and get a reaction. To make it super effective, I bring that arm down here, lock off onto my own, and all I do here, if I really don't like her, step in. And that's the grub it. So the next move we're going to go on to is this is we're actually going through a sequence here. So the idea is you build and you follow from this, but you can extract each individual principle folded into your own game. One of the idiosyncrasies of catch wrestling is if you ask 10 different catch wrestlers what a move is called, you'll get 12 different answers. For me, the next move we're going to do is called a half halch. If your other catch wrestler corrects you and says it's called something else, just nod, smile and wave bye bye, okay? Because everyone calls it something different. When we sequence through, we're going through from that beginning point. So we go for my core and elbow tie, which you've now got down pat. I do my break for the grovet, which I'm kind of okay at, but not the best, because see, she's got my arm and she's blocked me, and she's trying to drive her head up to stop me getting that, that move on. Now this is where this becomes important. Because this is here, when I move backwards and she goes down under my arm, she's gonna try and clear that arm, but it's a lot harder for her to do because of this elbow clock. If I have my elbow here and I go everything else, she clears, she's already under and she's through. Because I'm giving her the space to move. And it's not a big difference between this and this, but it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to moving that arm. So I step in, off, go for this, she blocks it. First thing I'm gonna do is I let this hand go, bring it over and under, and I bring it up into her shoulder here. Some styles will go for the hip, some styles will go for the back. I go right into the shoulder blade. And you see what the effect that has on her body. Posture up for me, please. So drive into me. Good. Stop. Drive into me. Good. Stop. Drive into me. Now it's not that she can't do anything to this move counter, but this enables me to do a much faster position for the next one I'm going to go to. So once I've got this locked here, I don't need this to be on like a vice. If it is, great. If it's not, doesn't matter. I've got her head locked to me, and I drop that arm to do this. If I hold her, pull your head out, I'm working. She can get it out, maybe, but she struggles for it. But you see the feather has on my body. If instead, I drop my weight, put your head out. Notice I'm not even holding it. So it's a very strange little idiosyncrasy because this tracks her movement. So this is like a shock absorber. So rather than hold it, which is one position that I then have to keep readjusting, by dropping this complete route. So as she moves, I move with her. Now, of course, I do complete the circuit, but now this is where I'm going. This is just locking on and holding on like it's a death grip. Here, step in, back here, drop that weight, swim that under. Now, watch again. That same step we did at the beginning, my feet come up. Now what I'm gonna do from this central position here is pivot. As I pivot, I wind it and I take it down. I'm gonna gently ease up on the head, because I like her. If I don't, Obviously, I can crank that up into a half Nelson, or if I want a further Nelson, I can drive that under here as well. If her head pops out, doesn't matter. I can transition to something else. Let's do that from this side. Lock in, step up, back lock, swim up, around, and in. And we're going to come on to this one a little bit later on. OK, 
Okay guys, so what we're gonna take you through now is an inside rolling takedown. Um, again, you ask a different person, they'll give you a different name for it. I just keep it simple, it's an inside roll, and I take them down with it, inside rolling takedown. This is again part of that sequence that we've been building up over these lessons. So, from here, I do that same set again, get that arm under here, and I get that head. Now this time, instead of setting for the grover or anything else, I'm gonna try and hit this leg here, okay? Now don't move it. As I go for that leg, I hook it. For those of you that are interested, there's a nice little suplex I can do from there. I can lift and drop, I can kick the leg out. There's a million and one things I can do. As soon as I get this head here, this becomes prime real estate for me to grab. So, Morrigan being smart, as we're here and I step up and in, she's gonna move that leg. Now notice she's also got this little wedge in place here. This can be an issue which I might have to move. However, there's an easy way I can fix it. This gap here looks rather appealing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck, roll, bring her all the way over here and hook that leg. In wrestling, of course, I pinned her. If I'm interested in more of a submission based game, I can just transition to the good stuff. And if I'm a MMA, I can hit her until she makes funny noises. One more time. So from here, yeah, but that's like that. Okay, so do the same step up and that head grab, reach for that leg. It fails. I come under and high. Don't take the knee. If I take the knee, she can collapse on me. So when I hit this, we bend me down, collapse down. And I get pinned. So instead of taking that knee, one, two, three here, hit that leg, go nice and high. Try not to put her in the next door shop. And that's your rolling take down. <laughs> Okay guys, so if we look at where the sequence has gone, we've gone from a basic tire position, we've got a couple of finishes, we've got from the top level, but now we've got the person down on the floor. When we're down here, in the same way when you look at any grappling system, there's a million and one submissions, but this is one of my favorites. Now this is called the Japanese triangle, some people call it reverse triangle, I'm sure some people call it beans on toast. It doesn't matter what you call it, all that matters is how you do that move. So I'm going to get my erstwhile training partner and punch him back to lie down on the floor there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So. In true wrestling terms, if she's down like this, and I go like that, I pinned her, because both her shoulders are on the mat, okay? If you see them going through the course of the demo, don't worry about it, it's just because we're talking this through. But I'm in a position here, and this is a common case of position from here that you see in the jiu-jitsu world. For me personally, this is how I hit it. I hit it very differently. I have a nine o'clock here, and I have a 12 o'clock here, and I've got a bit more control over her. What I'm gonna do from here is push that head down and step over. If she doesn't block, there's an armbar, okay? But this is what you call a sucker hold. You catch them in that, they're a sucker because no one should get caught in this. That said, they should always defend it. So as I'm going here and I step, this arm comes and she blocks that armbar coming over. Now notice she's also priming herself for her shrimping. So she rolls to her side now, there. She's trying to get out of that move to get herself into a better defensive position. So she's doing the right thing. It's just I'm that half step ahead of her. So as I'm in here, I step, she blocks. This is now my point of attack. I'm gonna send this arm, and I'm gonna try and get my tricep to her tricep, my armpit to her armpit. And as I do that, I do my little break dance to electric boogaloo. And I wipe it around like so. Now notice I've got that trapped under. The way a lot of people do this now is they close this off hand on the head, and they treat it like a choke, like so. And away she goes. Nothing wrong with that, it's a beautiful way to do it, okay? However, there is a better way. So I'm in here now, switch. She blocks, swipe and wipe, catch the bicep. Now watch, I can just do a fruit machine and choke her out from there. Or, I turn, I see a car coming, and I hitch a lift and I put the effect of this hold on a different part of the body than just a choke, okay? One more time. Lock, she blocks, I swipe. Now Lotus, I'm not even grabbed yet, but I've got this press down here, and I'm driving in. This is why I'm on my toes driving. Through, grab, hitch, go. 
Now, if I really don't like her, I can grab that toe, bow and arrow her at the same time. Or if I really, really don't like her, I keep this on, I switch up here, and I sit through. And eventually, I allow her time to breathe. <laughs> Japanese triangle. Okay guys, so the next move in the sequence, and if you notice, everything is going along in a nice progression. It's like a flow chart with options and diversifications as you're moving through. This next one is gonna come if I'm going for a Japanese triangle or a move from that position, and she's either giving me more energy than I can cope with, or she's out of position as I'm hitting that. So I'm down here, and I'm going for this, and she, as she does the push, she's really driving over. So she's already got that shrimping coming on. So not that I can't Japanese triangle but from here, but if you actually notice, because of her angle and her body position, she can do what we call a reverse wipe. So she reverse wipes, hits me, rolls over. And so she puts me in my own hold. There's no bigger diss in the wrestling world. So what we do instead is if I'm in that same position, and I'm hitting and she blocks and she comes all the way over. Now I'm still gonna go pit to pit, but as I go pit to pit, I offer praise to my deity of choice. Whichever one you pray to, you pray to that deity of choice and you thank them for the gift they're about to give you. And you do this like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then as you hit that prayer, you do that drive down into the arm. So notice, I've got this drive in and on. I can really tilt that in if I put some hilt forward or I'm just going to lean through and go from there. Let's reverse that again. One, two, three. Pray, tilt. I can lift and drive. But you see there's a slight delay on the effect there. If I pray, this is locked. My body and my arms now move as one. Now you'll notice one of her defenses as I go is to bend that arm. As she does that, this is called a Z-bar. Catch the elbow, mm. catch the wrist. Tap, 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 tap. Little bit of pressure yields a lot of results. So for those that are interested, we go. One more time all the way through. One, block, two, bend, tap. three. For those of you that are gonna stick around for the next class, here's a little taster. And we'll break that down when we're out next. Okay guys, so we've got a final move in the sequence. You'll notice Morgan's still down on the floor. Say hello to all the people at home. Hello. There you go. So we're gonna go with this flow through. Now the top wrist lock, AKA Americana, is common in a lot of the grappling arts and disciplines. We have a very subtly different way of doing it for the initial set. Where we go to for the finish is something else altogether. If we put this in the chain, I'll do that later on so you can see where it goes. You'll see it's a natural progression, but I wanna break this down individually first. So I'm gonna go from just a light side control position here, Morrigan. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take her hand here. Now normally, people do that thumbless grip. They come under, thumbless grip again, they bring it in and they paint the floor with it. And that's fine, it's a good lock and it's had many successes and victories. The fundamental problem is the thumbless grip came about because people used to get it caught in the geek when they were doing things. So when people would move their arm out of the way, the thumb would go with it. In wrestling, as often as not, we're either wearing spandex or we're not wearing much at all. So we don't need to worry about geese so much. The thumbless grip, if I push this down here and she offers me some resistance, I can get it with body weight, but it's a little bit of a struggle. If I put the thumb in, I can't drive it any, any harder, so I don't get anything from there, but watch this. Grip the thumb, drop that elbow and roll. See, now I've almost got the lock on before I've even started. Shorten it, one finger lock, don't do that for real, that's just to show the leverage, okay? So as I get this hand here, in whatever capacity this hand is on my face, I rev it like a motorbike. So my thumb, I'm turning that towards her head and you see I've not even put that on yet. Notice that shortens that link in the chain already. Then what I do is I hit to shorten it even further. From here now, next to nothing to put that lock on, okay? So, basics again. Grab with the thumb, 
rolling like it's a motorbike, accidentally elbow in the face. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> ref. <laughs> Grab again, tap it on, there she goes. That's the base version. But I know what you guys at home are all thinking about. You want something more than that, don't you? Because of course you do. That's what you're here for. I go down here, and as I'm going to go for this lock, she grabs her own hand. This is to stop me getting that arm down to the floor. You see, this makes it very difficult for me to get that lock on. I don't want to be struggling in this position too much longer because she's going to be moving to do something else. So what I do is this. As I go, she's pulling. I then ride that around her head. Switch the grip. Lift, put that in here. This is the nice version. This is the not so nice version. This is the nasty version. And out we go, okay? Let's sequence that through from that whole sequence as I put down on the floor here. I go one, bam, she's all the way over. Fuji bar, she bends the arm. Z bar, she starts to pull the arm out. Catch, roll down, around, lock in, sit through. Pinch the nose. Oh look, she's giving me that one too. And there you are guys. I hope that was useful and I hope that was fun. Did you have fun? I can't it hear you tapping. It was fantastic. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed these lessons. Jay Cooper, the hound, we can't thank you enough for giving us a taste of what catch wrestling is all about. An absolute pleasure. And I gotta be honest, I gotta give props to my teacher, Harry Smith, as well. He's the guy that shared it all with me. So if you enjoyed what you saw from me, I'm really, really pleased you did. I hope you found it useful. But when Harry starts to show his stuff, now we're at that next level. So there's a lot more good stuff to awesome. come, I'm quite sure. Where can people find you if they want to learn more? Uh, well, we're actually on uh, Facebook. If you look for Esteem Martial Arts and Havoc JKD, you'll find us on there. You can alternatively go to esteemandhavoc.com, which is our website. And if you're in Calgary at all, we're located at 7005 18th Street Southeast. That's right here in sunny Alberta. If you're also interested, I've got a podcast called The Baying of the Hound. That's on Facebook too. I interviewed two really cool dudes on my they were just show. Awesome. I, they were really good. I can't remember who they were, but some brothers the rudo brothers ah, something know. like that something, something like, like that. that but well worth checking out um but yeah so if you want to just um drop a line on that see what i've got feel free to do so and hey you know what i just love to share and big thanks to you guys for letting me get this out there beautiful thank you and be sure to su subscribe to all our channels and we will see you on the next video